Okay, folks, welcome to our student government meeting uh, TSAC. This is today's February 2nd, 2024. Um, let's start with attendance and I'll start with Will. William Coates present. Alejandro Casillas present. Ree Barco present. Um, Gabe. Gabe Trujillo present. Thank you. Happy Rathbun present. Okay. Thank you. And then Palacios present. Um, would anybody like to read the mission statement? Will. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you. Um, okay, so given that we need quorum, to approve the agenda, um, Re has a statement on what quorum meets in a very particular circumstances. With two members who have resigned or graduated and two members who are currently suspended as per the last vote last week, our quorum is six members and we have six members present. Thank you. And that is because we need two thirds. Oh, hi, Gabe. This is for a change for the agenda. This is like first I discussed this. I just have like like small change. But yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is because we need two thirds of our currently active members and out of the eight that are um active, six of us are here. So we, we do meet quorum. Um Gabe, would you like to motion your change to the agenda? Yeah, my my only uh, change is very small. Um, uh, is if we can just add a will to the state cap updates, please. Okay. Okay, let's vote for that. We're gonna vote for the agenda now. And anybody else want to do any changes? Sweet. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 Um. Sweet. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, let's start with. Uh, let's start with Seca because our friend Mike is not here. Um, Will, do you want to go first in your new role? I'll speak to what I did understand since um, I was mostly catching up with everything that's going on. And uh, Gabe, please feel free to chime in at any point. Um, but from what I took from the SACAP meeting, was that they are inviting the different schools and student leaders to put in some perspective for future uh, planning for the buildings that they're planning on constructing. Um, that was one thing that was being discussed. Um, and then there was a motion being passed for Ziggy's Hub, which was basically when student groups, well, it prevents student groups from taking up more of the Siggy hub space than they're uh, allocated. So the motion was to, or the resolution was to prevent certain groups from, um, how should I say this? I'll just say it, hoarding Siggy's hub for their own group. <clears throat> so it gives, a heck a little more power in saying like uh we have all these spaces and you know you can't like take over Siggy's hub and stuff like that um and please Gabe uh if you don't mind chiming in on that one yeah definitely uh yeah so um for for, for Siggy's hub it's basically just to not let Siggy's hub be, 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 be rented out uh so it can stay as a student space um and like student lounge area and although like students groups can still say like, oh we're going to meet here you know it, it's the same way with like starbucks they can say oh we're going to be in starbucks we can't keep students from from wanting to meet in there however we can't keep them from taking over like the entirety of the space and rent it out and so it's more so to just ensure that it's as flexible as it can for students and then for that um meeting it's for the Sasaki group uh, so they can come in and get more information again on like what area will be reimagined as, as Will said. 
And that date we're looking for is February 16th from 10 to 11. And we and it's and we're inviting uh, all student governments ac across our area to come to this meeting. So if any of you are available that time, I repeat, it is uh, February 16th from 10 to 11. If you're available to go and, you know, give your input, that would be wonderful. OK, um, I do have a question for the both of you, and it might be might be a little bit of a task. Um, I know that there's overnight guards at the Tivoli, like we, we know. How would we feel about asking if we could keep Sigi's Hub open overnight for study, like studying spaces? Um, again, I know that that would be an uphill battle, but I don't know. Just the. One. Uh, yeah, you go ahead, Will. Um, I can definitely float that idea or like put, push that idea at SACA. I think it's worth. Uh, uh, you know, talking about for sure. I think that's a great idea. But, you know, that's me. Gabe, you have. Yeah, I I also think it's a great idea. I, I think especially with the idea of, of how we want it to be that student lounge space, it, it definitely makes sense to, to, give it, to keep it open uh, later on than other other areas. And so, yeah. Thank we, you. We, um, I can, can definitely push that in. Sweet. OK. Um, yeah, that space can definitely be like reformed into something really cool. But let's let's discuss more before we solidify anything. Cool. Thank you. Anything else from Seika? Awesome. Three. We will have um, a res an amendment to vote on in old business and um, any other issues any members have regarding accountability, I invite you, you know, to talk to Gabe and myself and the committee, um, because not just for this instance, but for anything, you know, we are here to try to have a more robust and and successful council. Thank you, Re. Appreciate that. Alejandro. Um, there's not much on the budget committee, just uh, we're going to be looking into some office supplies for TSEC to do a little bit of remodeling. That's about it. Woohoo. Um, sweet. A PR committee, Matt. Yeah, so I put in the PR committee chat today. We're going to try and set up a time to meet on Tuesday. Um, thank you, Gabe, for responding. Um, to go over some last details uh, for a tabling event uh, from the 14th or 15th of February. Right. That's about all I have. Thank you. Um, any open announcements? No? Okay. Do you have one? Oh. It's more of a question. Okay. But, um, I I, I was uh, wondering if there'd be, I mean, we can set this up uh, like other than a meeting time, but a time to discuss revisions that we were asked of for the Constitution. Um, and I was just wondering more about that, um, if there'd be anyone wanting to discuss um, privately about, you know, potential reforms to the Constitution. That's, I that's it. I believe that the last thing we said on that was that we we're, we're going to open a document and uh, we were going to submit all of our comments. Um, the deadline was the 9th to Armando and Dr. Barone. OK. Um, so if you want to open that, that document, like a whole new document, do like a save ass and. Yeah, do a whole new document of the Constitution, add us on and then. Yeah. OK, awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Track changes in the new document. Yeah, we'll and, and we will track comments, not changes, because we like oh yeah, PDF. Because it, it will be like a, a word doc. Or like you, you the constitution is set in a word doc, so we would make comments in the word doc. 
And then uh, I believe Armando and Dr. Brown will revise them by the, like uh, Armando said to have him ready by the ninth last meeting. And then after that, we will set a meeting with our comments and whatever uh, and, and the comments our advisors have for for us. Have you shared a document in OneDrive before? I have it, but I can get with you offline and because I'm happy to that get out. it started if you want me to. I'm familiar with doing that and then sharing it with our that be lovely entire group to get us started. I can do that. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Re. Sure. Thanks, Re. Okay. Do you have an open comment, Kay? Okay. Uh, jump, just some housekeeping. Um, I'm trying to clean up the office a little bit more. I see that there are some things that just haven't been used for quite a while. So if you see a sticky note there, see you, Gabe. it's probably just going to be like, hey, what is this used for? And probably by the end of next week, if there are just some things that are still there and no one has taken claim or see any purpose in it, I will look into removing it just for the cleanliness of the office. Thank you. I have Gabe. On, oh, do you have a direct comment to that? No? Okay. I have Gabe on the stack and then you. Hi, Gabe. Hi. Hi, all. So I just want to remind you all again that, when, that whenever we are in the student government office, that we're ensuring that the doors are closed um, fully. Uh, on last Wednesday, um, at, at around like 5 p.m., I went to the office and like everything was turned off. However, our door was like not shut um, and it was like and people could just, you know, walk in and we just want to make, make sure that the safety and the security of one, our own stuff in there as well as, you know, the university stuff is all good. So please, please be mindful about the space, who is being left in the space um, and ensuring that, that there are people, that there are TSEC members present when uh, the space is in use and that the doors and lights, you know, are being shut off and, you know, all that fun stuff. Thanks, Gabe. Will, do you have something? Well, not. I. No? Okay. Um, okay, I do have one. So I went to President's Cabinet yesterday, and I gave our statements on one and the RTD line. Um, admin looked very... Eager to help. Um, yeah, they they said to please keep him on the loop. Someone in the oops, someone that was in the audience said that AHIC has a plan for a shuttle, uh, but President Davidson asked the people in the room to please uh, help us. So, yeah, there was comments about that. James Mejia did say that he was aware of the situation. Um, more on that to come. Uh, that he, yeah, that he was aware and that the student had uh, contacting him, be, contacted him before. So the university knows that we know. Uh, regarding the, the statement against war, there was some miscommunication there from us as well. So we did not write the resolution, and I said that uh, during the comment. We did not write it. We just sponsored it. Um, but from now on, every resolution that passes needs to be sent to Dr. Barone and to Armando. So it gets to admin as soon as we do it. Um, and Kenny, I'm going to need help with you from you in that sense. Um, so please like be, be mindful of that as well. Um, if it's your resolution, just send me a message. And then, like, after we passed it, like, two days and be like, hey, Danny, did we send this to admin? Just please, uh, a reminder. Um, there was no response to that. I did not get a response from admin on the resolution. Um, yeah, I, d I don't know. Um, and then if, uh, with the thing with the Chicano Studies Department, um, I said that the, the take we were approaching was that we were looking at this as an academic freedom policy and issue, and it was reiterated to me that it is a personnel issue. Uh, so there are, there's still work to do there. Um, 
that is all for open floors announcements for me. I have one for faculty senate, but that's, that's it. Okay, no one else for sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna go to faculty senate. Um, this one is also a little spicy. So there is an incoming policy and I would like to have five minutes to discuss and I would like you guys' thoughts on this. Uh, this was brought up by the coaches in the athletic department. Um, professors with the academic freedom policy decide how to run their classroom, how their curriculum looks like, and so, so do assignments. Um, you know, some professors can reject the idea that athletics are recent enough to excuse assignments, that uh, excuse students. Um, but in this case, the policy says that professors can still do that and can still like refuse to accept any like excuses or or sorry like excuse assignments or attendance unless it's a university sponsored event or an athletic event. My perception, and this is just me, is that one, this does conflict with academic freedom because we're telling professors when they can and they cannot do. And then the second one is that it is not very equitable. Um, I, for example, I'm going to model UN on the 19th uh, of April and because it is a sp university sponsored event. Like, I don't think I would be exempt for my assignments. Um, so I don't know the, the, Faculty members say that like, well, these are students, some, some faculty members in the Senate say things like, well, these are students that are, you know, contributing to the university. But so like, I, there is a lot of nuance in how students contribute to the university. So we could have five minutes to discuss if anyone has any thoughts on this. Re? I feel there needs to be consistency in academia and sports when a student um, when a policy is being reviewed ba based on what a student is doing outside of campus. And your example is a great one, Denny. And I can, I can see personally how there are some professors on campus who don't use Canvas, who don't, you know, participate in all new technology and things because excuse the term, but old guard kind of thing. And they would be rigid on some of their rules. And, you know, and so maybe the need came up. This is an assumption on my part to try to have a little flexibility with some of the athletic students, I guess, not knowing anything beyond that. But my view is if there is going to be recommendation coming as a policy from the university, it needs to be, it needs to encompass academic pursuits, professional pursuits, as well as just uh, athletic. I do, and I, I just have a quick response to that. So I, they, there was, someone suggested that perhaps, perhaps the assignments uh, are given to the coaches and then the coaches give it to the students. And then the coaches, like the coaches, feel it, like put him in a, a sealed envelope, and then return it to the faculty member. So I'm not saying we're gonna shut it. Like I'm not saying we're completely unsupporting it. Like we 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 also represent athletic students. Um, so I like if you guys have any other ideas of how this could be proposed. No, 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 no. So they no, they will just so for them to not miss assignments. Yeah, assignments, the the coach would. And this is just a suggestion. Nothing of this has happened. Nothing of this is official. This is scheduled. This is a schedule to be in discussion for the next three weeks with the academic policy committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so if in the meantime, you guys have any feedback, let me know. Yes, Will. Just, an, just another idea, maybe. <clears throat> Who's the department that oversees like the athletics on school, the athletics department or something? I don't know. I think maybe whoever's that department should take on that and potentially because like 
coaches, like, yeah, they work directly with the student, but they have a lot of times many students under them. And I could see that as a way of doing things, but maybe like the department would work with the classes that they're supposed to take, the athletic students, and then work potentially some kind of plan or something for the students. Like, hey, these are the days that we have planned for this the student that's going to go play and let's see what issues it uh, conflicts with the class itself and maybe develop some kind of plan. I guess they, the one of the challenges with faculty is that we already have, uh, are you, do you have your hand up? Okay. Uh, we have a, a workload uh, mm -hmm. issue coming up already. And this, like, that's also something that was brought up. But at mm -hmm. this point, then that means having faculty create a whole new curriculum for a new student. And like, like we already have a workload issue, like issue. Um, and again, the faculty member, because of academic freedom, is totally welcome to say, no, that's not how I run my class. You can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe not a curriculum though, but something, I see what you're saying though. That's yeah, we, we can say that it is not that, not, not that deep. Mm -hmm. But it, this is their, like, that's what these people do for a living. Like, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, this is their mastery. So, like, I don't, I don't know. Last year in this position, I served on that policy advisory committee. I know this is faculty senate and it's a different committee. But when they were considering the inclement weather kind of policy and they were bumbling around, I found the UC Boulder policy. And they used that as kind of a template to, to consider. I know this is not a D1 school and I would suggest the faculty Senate, you know, or policy advisory committee, whichever, to consider what CU Denver's policy might be and try to emulate that because they might be going through some similar things that we haven't already done that work as suggestions. Okay, we are out of time, Matt. Um, let's do... Are you guys cool with three more minutes of this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I was saying I'm to extend this for three more minutes. This is question for three more minutes. I would say five more minutes. Five? So open or public announcement. Okay, let's, yeah, okay. Let, I motion that we extend this conversation for five more minutes. I second. Okay, let's vote. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Um, okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Kenny. Um, I guess would to that read, let me just answer the remat and I'll get back to you. With that read, it's the fact that we are like, we are one of the only universities in Colorado that do not offer this, this type of policy to students. Mm. But my, I, I, I suppose where the challenge comes for me is that we are not a regular university. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to offer this to like athletics, then we're going to offer it to everybody. I, I, and that's what I want to make sure like, and we're going to offer it to every single student that's involved. But then that also applies to like, what does that mean? Does the organization have to be registered with CMEI? Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so it's a tricky one. I have a, another suggestion is having a meeting with Taylor Tackett on this having come from another university and bringing some of the ideas and policies from other schools, he might have some good ideas around this. Yeah. Okay. Matt. Yeah, I was just thinking and more towards like Will's point about the curriculum aspect, more of just um, kind of like what they do with accessibility stuff of just more reasonable accommodations. Like a little extra time to turn an assignment or they can take their test in the testing center when they get back from said event kind of stuff i mean since you since you work there do you, i mean i'm sure this is like a, a we have to well, do this, this by law center. right like with it right with the access center like the, we have by law by law to do an access center like this is this is an issue of like whether faculty wants it like wants to do this or not because they don't have to but we do have to offer an accessibility center and we have to offer access like accessible 
accommodations for students. Um, yeah, Alejandro. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, um, I agree with Matt. Maybe they should do like some more accommodations like that. Um, you know, from my perspective, like a lot of my courses are kind of heavy. Um, and let's I know there are a few um, athletes that are pursuing engineering degrees. So I do kind of see it unfair if they get exempt from like having to turn something in because they have to go to a game or something, you know. OK. Matt. Matt and then Will. Yeah, because reasonable accommodation still can mean that they say no to you, depending on if it's more of an unreasonable one. Like if it's three weeks late in assignment versus like a couple extra days, like you could still have discrepancy to say no. Okay. Yes, Will. Like you said, it's it's very dependent on the. You said staff sent it. I'm sorry, I'm not using the right. Uh, no, it would be up to faculty, like to, faculty. The, to the faculty member to decide if they want to give. Right. So uh, my question would be how when you were in that meeting, how did they how did you feel like they came off of like that idea? Like were they you said there's a little bit of a mix, a little receptive, a little not, I'm not sure. No, I and I mean, I have to say that like some faculty members were very much like willing to support the initiative. Um, I didn't say much because I, I, I wouldn't want to say some, something. And then I realized that like the policy, what I'm suggesting is just not viable. Um, but I did ask if this was a violation to freedom, academic freedom and, um, they, regardless if the academic policy committee or not passes this resolution, the resolution still goes to the faculty senate. So the, the academic policy is a uh, the academic policy uh, committee is a subcommittee within the faculty senate. We have to sit there because academic policy affects us directly. That's why TSAC is there. Um. So I don't know. I think the end of that conversation was. How do we keep both faculty and then make this flexibility happen? Because regardless or not, it's still going to go to the, fa the faculty Senate floor. Um, so again, we have three weeks. These are like our initial thoughts, and I am going to bring them when I, we meet on Wednesday. Uh, sweet. That was it for me. Council of Chairs. You know, I don't know. I. The Council of Chairs and Directors was there yesterday at the president. Yes, Kenny. Uh, quickly, it's 1 p.m. Oh, it is 1 p.m. You're right. Thank you. It is 1 p.m. Uh, we are open for public comment. If there is anyone that would like to. Uh, let themselves like let, let us know that they're here to make a public comment. Please make yourselves known. Otherwise, we're going to keep going until I see someone else. Sweet. The Council of Chairs was here yesterday for the president's cabinet and they've been meeting, but I've never gotten I have never gotten an email or anything about it, Dr. Brown, and I that also sp slipped my mind. Are you talking about the Jessica Retrum, the president of the Council of Chairs? I, yeah, Council of Chairs and Directors, right? So I believe that they have a regular meetings like once a month or something like that, and anybody can show up. This was a activity that uh, Paul was interested in. That wasn't something that was a required um, group or, you know, like a required thing that TSAC actually participated in. It was something that Paul was very interested in. So um, since they haven't been active, I don't know, like, is that something that you all, it doesn't seem like it's been happening. Is that something you all still want to prioritize since it hasn't been happening? Is that, do you have capacity for it, Denny? I can connect you with Jessica, but she sent the information back then and said anyone could attend whenever they wanted, but that um, there would not be like a voting seat or anything on the council of chairs. It would just be more to attend their meetings. Yeah, and, and it didn't sound like there was a action being taken. Yeah. It's more about like present meeting and 
like figuring out what chair like chair ship looks like in every aspect of campus mm -hmm. um i would like to attend okay all right then i'll connect you with jessica thank you mm -hmm. okay uh Tri-Institutional Leaders Committee, are we, how are we on that, Will? There's no updates on that. Um, I do suggest that we, or I, I'm going to do it if no one does, but put in a time for next meeting to discuss the committees that kind of are unnecessary due to the circumstances of how TSAC is currently. Yeah, I think a resolution would be a good idea for that for next meeting. Do we need a resolution for that or can we vote on it? I feel like we would need it. Like if we're going to take time of the agenda, we would need a resolution to discuss. Oh, hi, Gabe. Oh, I, yeah. I just wanted to say um, be, one aspect of, of this that I'm so great about uh, removing it is because of FACAB and that tri-institutional flow of information through, through that way. Um, and then ha ha have the other like um, universities been contacted uh, about just, like, you know, dissolving this completely? So he's asking if you, he's asking if, like, because you are thinking of not being a part of this. So if you're not being a part of this, like, does that mean we're dissolving it? I think it is a, something that is worth pursuing, but due to our circumstances as TSEC, um, not as much as other committees or, you know, because right now we're operating at eight uh, counselors, so. I don't want to completely scratch it, maybe try it again next year. So that's that's kind of my headspace. Gabe, Gabe, what would what would be the. Yeah, like what what are your thoughts on on this? Because you mentioned the world is dissolving it. What what does that mean to you? I think. Personally, right, coming from my place within say cab right now i i think like that's what that was part of the point of say cab was to create that tri-institutional flow of information well quad institutional including a heck and so i think say cab is there to to, to fulfill that purpose of a tri-institutional committee um and so that's how i personally see it uh in my time at on say cab um Although I do see like the importance as well of having connections directly with the presidents of of the other student governments, however, I'm not sh I, I don't know if, if the transitional committee is the best way to go about that personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's make a resolution so we can discuss this. Um, if you want it in the agenda for next meeting, we don't have much going on in the agenda. The next meeting, so please. Kenny, do you have something to say? Um, probably just a quick update for next week's agenda. We do have someone coming in on like 115 <clears throat> for a presentation on course scheduling. Uh, it'll only take them like 15 minutes. Other than that, nothing yet has been added to the agenda. Oh, sorry. I do have another update that I forgot about. Um, I also met with the Diversity and Inclusion Task Force, and these, th this committee was created out of a, a policy in the Faculty Senate to make sure that diverse perspectives were present in the curriculum and the employee handbook. So this policy affects mostly our faculty members, like tenured or not tenured. Um, the, they are proposing a language change in the teaching uh, descriptions in the in the handbook as well as the tenured. They want to come and present to us in the next two weeks. Yes, um, I will put that on the agenda as well, just so you guys know. Faculty is coming to talk to us about these changes. Sweet, uh, Mike, you are here. Do you have anything from the board of trustees? 
Um, I met actually with our new provost in the hall as I was coming up. Um, we have a scheduled meeting here in the next two weeks to talk about recent, uh, talk about my letter I gave to the board. Um, yes, so we'll be talking about that as well. And depending on whether the, how that meeting goes, we, I would suggest we might read, read resolution. Um, either like, how do I say this? Either um, <clears throat> addressing the situation with Dr. Nieto, uh, Dr. Adriano Nieto, um, what we want to do moving forward, if the administration isn't going to heed to our demand, and I think we start demanding other things, um, maybe possibly resignation. So this would be my uh, would be my uh, update on that. But I'll let you know how that meeting goes next few weeks. Let me let me answer to him. Can I come? Can I come to the meeting with the provost? Of course. Okay. Great. Well. No. Okay. Our uh, Dr. Barone, it's your turn. <laughs> I know you're waiting. <laughs> Production. Uh, <laughs> a couple of updates. Um, so, just so you all know, I have made time. I told Kenny this the other day. I'm going through the election codes. Um, and have some feedback and edits. Some Armando and I are working on that. So that's one of my weekend projects because I haven't had time to actually make them. Um, but we are there are inconsistencies that I am finding um, in the election codes just around references to the handbook and uh, still saying that we have a president of the council um, that are pretty blatant, like, you know, things that we need to change just for consistency, and I want to invite you all as you're reviewing the Constitution um, to also consider those things that need to be omitted, deleted. Um, I know Denny said that Armando and I are going to go in and make those changes, but I really need you all to like highlight sections or words or whatever it is and give like what you would like to see replaced in that. It takes a lot of time to edit these documents, and there is a lot of uh, language um in them and so um i really would like us to be clear in the way that we're communicating these things because there's so much that it's sometimes hard to even make sense of what what things say um so re your expertise on technical writing and being concise yes would be super helpful yes. um in reviewing um the documents and looking for clarity okay um in terms of not just the constitution but in connection to like once we have the election code updated and so forth um so, so know that i have been doing my homework huh? yeah i was gonna say you can send that election code to me afterward as well yeah after we make the initial edits i'll probably share it with me first and probably kenny just to get some eyes on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so I, I am working on it. It's just, it, it's really long and it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm working on um, is I'll be helping to give feedback and input on our SAB presentation, which I know those are due um, in this next week before we actually present, which is February 12th. I'm on for five presentations that day, um, or four, not five. Um, but just want you all to know that I hope to have that uh, to be able to share with you all by next week for any um, final revisions um, or just wanting to make sure you all, you know, are, are aware of what the feedback was there. Um, and then what else? Yeah. Oh, resolutions. Yes. Um, as you all are passing resolutions, I just want to remind you that it is important that we get a clean copy of the resolution. There's a lot of uh, editing and commenting on those resolutions before they are actually um, brought to vote. Um, so, um, Kenny, I'm going to be leaning on you um, and Denny to get a clean copy of those resolutions um, to help us get them to senior leadership once they are actually passed so that they're actually aware of what you all are, uh, what activity is going on here and what things they need to be aware of um, in terms of responding to. Um, what else? I think that's it. Um, elections. We are working on the elections timeline. Armando's giving an FSL workshop right now, but um, we are working on the elections timeline. I know Armando's working on that diligently. So just know we are we're we're getting things set up. If you all have any students who are interested in being an elections manager, please do send 
them Armando's way um, because we do need to um, get to interviews and hiring for that position pretty quickly. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Sweet. I have Mike on the stack and then I have Matt. Mike and then Matt and then Ree. Quick question. So you said there's some big inconsistencies in election, the elections code that was passed by last year's council. Do we pay an elections manager a not a, like a not insignificant amount of money to make sure those inc inconsistencies wouldn't happen? Because that's what it was passed last year, and we paid him a lot of money to make sure these elections code would at least wouldn't make the mistake of president of the council. Matt. I was just going to also ask if we can get our resolutions in the past resolutions folder in the shared drive. I don't think we've had any in there since I think the budget. OK, thanks. Please make sure when you put those in there that if that if that's where you're going to keep them for record keeping that they are the clean version, right? Like that it's not. With all the editing and commenting and everything on it. Um, thank you. My comment is to all of council, you have, whether you've checked your email or not, I have created a new file called amended constitution, TSAC 2023-24 edits, and I have shared it with all of you. So it's a new file and I've turned on track changes. So as Dr. Barone had asked, you know, we, we ne you need to be this, we have one more week really to read this for Armando's deadline of the ninth. Um, to go through when you edit your initials might come up there might be a different color for your edits and things and if you want to leave comments for me I am by trade a technical writer and so this is what I do all during the work weekdays and I'm happy to take your ideas and and make them a little more concise and I'll check back with you to make sure that you know if you if you're like I know I want to say but I can't say it right I'm happy to help you so Please get into that document ASAP. Everyone has has been sent this now. Sweet. Thanks, Ray. OK, with that, we're going to pass to wait, Dave, you had your hand up and you lowered it. Do you do you have something? Oh, uh, no, no, no. OK, sweet. Um, so we do have. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you, I do have one more thing? Um, one of the things that is really, really important as we are making um, expenses or paying for things um, that I'm going to ask everyone here to be mindful of is that we really need to keep track of our spending and making sure we have documentation to support that, whether it's receipts for food or um, when we are uh, sponsoring student orgs or student groups to do things, I know we've cleaned up that process with the budget committee um, in the fall to like do a formal letter and this is how much you're getting and documenting those things. Um, but in terms of like credit card pur purchases and those types of things, I really need to make sure that you all are submitting the receipts in a timely fashion. Um, because I get all of the notices for my staff and I have 32 of them when those things don't happen and we get angry emails from accounting telling us like daily and if they are not happening um, the cards will be taken away and there will be no purchasing moving forward so it's typically a month that staff are given to reconcile their budgets and to allocate for funding for whatever we're paying for on their credit cards so think 30 days, that's what time they have to get into work day to make those allocations to do what they need to do. So they need the receipt from you immediately after it happens so that they have time to do that. So that would be Armando in this case. So I'm just letting you all know, because if not, he runs the risk of losing his card. And it's not just losing his card for use of TSAC. It's for fraternity sorority life and his own personal use too. OK, thank you, Dr. Ron. Appreciate that. Um, OK, uh, we're going to move to old business. We do have the accountability constitutional amendment, Ray, but we do have uh, an organization coming to present at 1.30. Would it be OK if we started it and then when they show up? We will we will let them figure it out. Yeah, we'll pause.
Um, I will give you the floor. So this is the amendment to the accountability committee committee framework that you all had approved in November. Um, we felt that um, corrective practices, I suppose, and um, a result of that needed to be accounted for in here. And so I'll read this to you as swiftly as I can. This is amendment um, 14, an amendment needed to ensure the student government of Metropolitan State University of Denver can remain functional from year to year. A reminder that members of SGTSAC consider violations of the university's code of conduct and dereliction of one's duties as a student advocate to constitute a hindrance to the mission of the university and SGTSAC. We recognize that our members are human beings. They're capable of making mistakes and learning from them. We all are. Members are accountable for their role as student advocates for our student body, in addition to their role as students. In the event of an alleged misconduct or alleged dereliction of the duties of an elected council member, the current, it says judiciary chair position, which I need to change to accountability chair position, voted upon at establishment of each newly elected council and two committee members selected by the chair will act in accordance with structural changes introduced in this proposed amendment. This will protect the council from continuing issues brought forth by members who are either not participating or refuse to participate in restorative and corrective practices during the course of the school year when disharmony and problems occur. So the purpose, this amendment, serves to add a restriction to prohibit counselors who are uncooperative, non-participating members from running in the upcoming election for the next school year as follows. So here's the proposed structural change. Um, adding to step three, final processes in the existing amendment, a new subsection H, whereas a member who has not participated in restorative practices has not worked toward reconciliation with the remaining counselors or has been suspended or removed from SGTSEC for reasons outlined in the new accountability committee committee amendment will be unable to hold any positions as a member of SGTSAC for two years after suspension or removal. This structural change is intended to decrease the potential for continued disharmony and disruption to the incoming council. So whereas SGTSAC is elected by and accountable to the students at MSU Denver, whereas failure to adhere to MSU Denver's code of conduct or behavior that hinders one's duties to participate and perform as a counselor and conduct business as part of the larger council also constitutes a hindrance to the mission of SGTSAC. Therefore, be it resolved, this amendment intended to bar a counselor who has been suspended from the council based on behavior that the accountability committee has deemed harmful to the larger council and its members through a lack of effort and or will to restore the member's position will result in the counselor's ability, inability to hold a position as a member of SGTSAC for two years following suspension or removal. Would anyone like to discuss this? Let's begin the seven minutes of discussion. I do have a question. Um, so this is this is the same document that was in the chat a week ago. But the wording wasn't correct. What happened was we wanted to lean on um, what another um, student government had has in place in their constitution as far as going forward for counselor participation based on their suspension or removal so that we are considered to be fair and in alignment with what others are doing. I guess the, my, my question concerns more like sunshine laws and making sure that this exact version was available to everyone 24 hours before this meeting. So this is this is the same like sh like sh shared live document that was mm -hmm. in the chat. Okay, that's right? all. Yes, that, that is all I wanted. Except there there would be a change where I have made a mistake where it says judiciary chair position. Okay, and, and we just offer that. In yeah. the Can you just change it like live right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? <sighs> okay. We have seven minutes to discuss this. Nobody wants to say anything. I motion that we end discussion. I second. I'd like to say one more thing if I can, y'all, and forgive me for not saying this. This is not, this amendment would be for our constitution and for going forward for our own, all of our accountability. This is not specific to any council member. 
Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to make the motion again, Mike? A motion that we, uh, hmm, what was the motion? Oh, we end discussion. I second. Okay. Uh, the motion is on the floor to end discussion. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Okay. Would well, you have to make a motion for something? Eh? A motion that we vote on his amendments. Okay. I second. Okay. We. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was second. Everybody who agree with moving to voting, say aye. 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 Okay. And now we're voting. I motion that we vote. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, let's vote on this. Um, no, no. Roll that's calls. that's up to the chair. I don't want to do roll calls because we we're doing this as a collective, and we're doing this for like to to protect the council for yeah the future councils. Like we we're doing this as a collective, so this is going to be a general vote as well. Okay. Okay, everybody who agreed to the amendment to the accountability uh, code, say aye. 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 Everybody who opposes, any, any, oppo any opposition? Any abstentions? It passes. Thank you, Ree. Thank you, everyone. Good job, Ree. Remember how you didn't want the accountability chair? Remember that? <laughs> She's doing great. She is doing great. Can I just make a quick comment if we have time? We do have time. I think uh, that what you just done and what we've just done is very essential for the survival of TSAC moving on. So thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to motion for a break of five minutes. Like that. Sweet. Everybody who agree? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Hi, Michelle. Hi, Wolf. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys can share screen immediately. So, yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. I just did it. I couldn't hear you guys at the beginning, which is why I didn't say anything. Yeah, we, we just came back from a break, Michelle. Hi. Um, okay, let's continue with our meeting. We have um, we have the Multicultural Great Council funding presentation. Um, yeah, they are about to present. I think we have Michelle Collin and Juan Manuel Gonzalez. I, that is, it's Juan. Yes. Um, it's Juan. <laughs> yes, me. Uh, um, uh, let's, yeah, if you guys want to go ahead, the floor is yours. Um, we, we're listening. Okay, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, and you guys could see my screen too, right? I just want to make sure before I start talking. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so yes, my name is Michelle Colleen. I am here to do a presentation to get receive funding for our AFLV West Conference. And then just like how you mentioned, Juan is also in the meeting with us. Yes. Um, so yes, so just a few more details about what this conference is. It is the National Cultural Greek Leadership Conference. We would be attending the actual conferences from February 29th to March 2nd, and we would be arriving there the 28th and coming back the 3rd just to get the whole experience. The whole loca the location would be in Anaheim, California, and then some of the topics that we just hope to experience at this um, conference is to just build a more of a community within our FSL um, team, some organization engagement, time management, and communication skills. And then just a bit of a detailed or detailed overview is that AFLV West provides an opportunity to connect with and learn from similar leaders across the country. AFLV West will provide content specifically tailored to cultural Greeks, all who attend our campus. One of the questions that we are answering with this presentation was, how will this travel contribute to the academic enrichment to those attending and to the MSU Denver student body? Uh, we will be doing this by um, passing on everything that we do gain at this conference. Um, we will be receiving a lot of uh, resources, a lot of things that would help benefit our organizations and also us as students and also as members of the FSO community. Yeah, just a little bit from our from our answer. Um, MSU student body is known to always be on the move and have chaotic days. So kind of in reference to our commuter identity. Um, so the knowledge, resources and networking we get will be used for our campus's benefit. So we do plan on disseminating that information to our other um, organizations and student members. And essentially we will be the bridge that connects our student body to these experiences. So we hope to be that bridge for those students. And some of a uh, a uh, few topics that we hope to get from this event are under the influence of stress by Corey Siochetti, which I believe the participants who uh, went to last year's conference uh, got the opportunity to see his workshop. Yard Vibrations by Joshua Lane. This is actually one of Armando's very own fraternity brothers. Um, so we are hoping to go see what his workshop is about and that's just more about building community on campus and then supercharging your community by Stu Massengill, which I believe the students who got to attend last year also received this information. And some of the ways that we do plan on submitting this information, um, we have a variety of communication experiences that we um, utilize here at the campus. Some of those being our newsletter, um, our Multicultural Greek Council, and our FSO 101, which um, in, in entails all of our new members. They have to go through this orientation, so it's another way that we do to submit that information to them. Yes. And so one of the one of the main things that we are hoping to get with our travel experience is to exemplify the mission statement of MSU Denver. And we hope to do that by allowing us to network with other uh, attendees and then communicate that to the rest of the community, not only within the FSL community, but just as well as other students who 
um, are looking to be in more leadership opportunities or just like that. And just like how in our statement says, um, a lot of our organizations are multicultural, so this can help us be introduced to new cultures that we can educate our members about. And so we are always including or bringing in new members to the FSL community. And so with that, we can just keep on making every generation be better. Here is a breakdown of our budget for our trip. Um, the first thing that we're going to be looking at are our flights. Um, for nine students, it's going to be around $323.95 each, which gives us a total of $2,591.60. That will cover our flights. For lodging, um, we do have a pricing of $1,312.58 per room um, with the, I believe it is three rooms in total, which gives us a grand total of $3,937.74. Um, which covers our lodging. Um, our registration is 429 per student, which um, results in 3,432 um, in total for registration fees. And then we have uh, also budgeted $400 in food and, and other necessities for the students on the trip. And so here are some of the May, some main skill developments that we hope to gain from this conference. Number one being is that we would have the opportunity to be networking with other people, not from the same organization, but just from the same community, I guess you could say. Um, and then the next one being that it would give us a space to engage in conversations that could allow for growth and to see other perspectives that aren't from our stu from students from our campus. And then as well as learning how to prioritize our own resources and time effectively. And that was pretty much it for our presentation. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to all that we had to share. Um, we were just hoping we were just wondering if you had any questions for us. Hi, Michelle, I, I do have questions. So are you, oh. you guys you guys are where the our limit is 1500, correct? Yes. OK. Um, I, you, I, I know you guys have definitely depicted what the, like, the needs are. Um, but as student government, we do need like a clear account of what this money is being spent on. So what has already been paid for and like what would this money go specifically to? I believe everything that has been purchased for is for the the what for the registration because we did have to do that in advance. So I believe Armando already did that, and then for the flights as well, I believe that also got paid upon beforehand just because it is things that were on a time sensitive level. Right. Um, can you can you bring oh can you no sorry that you don't have it so the 1500 do you do you know exactly where they would go i personally don't know exactly where it would be going to um but maybe if armando wants to hop on in hi armando yeah i can answer that so everything has been paid for we're just looking for the allocations what the 1500 um or the student org or the student government allocations will go towards um their registrations they will go specifically to the registrations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else has any questions for them? Sweet. Okay. So we vote a week from now on this, correct? That's not what the map. No. Are. So <clears throat> can I, may I speak in? Yes. So the budget committee already did that for us. So with the approval of the budget committee, it goes to the main council this week. That amendment, new amendment this fall, was stripped. The entire get to the entire process. So we vote to confirm today. So we're voting today. Yes. OK. And I would prefer we do a roll call. This one. Give me a sec. I have I have to discuss with my vice chair. How many students are going with you guys? It's going to be eight of us in total. Eight total. Thank you. Hold on. You want to make the motion? A motion that we vote on their proposal. 
I second it. For the sake of safety, can we just recall that motion without Mike having the call since it's conflict of interest? Since he's oh, going you are right. Yes. Sorry, he was. He's always my motion person. You're good. Um. Well. I motion that we vote on this. Okay. I second. Same. Cool. Then we are voting to allocate fifteen hundred dollars to the Multicultural Greek Council funding presentation for them to pay for the registration fees for the uh, for this conference. Okay, we are going to do uh, an individual roll call, and we'll, we'll start with Will. I vote aye. Okay. Mike. I abstain. Thanks, Mike. Oh, hold on. I need to count things. Yes. Okay. Three. I vote yes. Okay, Alejandro. I vote yes as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Gabe. Gabe says yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, Matt says yes. And I say yes. And okay, I think we only had one abstention. That is six. That is two thirds. And it passes. Okay, uh, congratulations, guys. We will talk to Armando to get that to you. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Yep. Oh, the turbine has something to say. Can I just ask for, again, the documentation if. if Y'all voted on this to make sure that we're um, sending a official notice to the group. Oh, what do you mean? Can you be more specific? Yeah, the the process that laid, they laid out in the in the fall around notifying student orgs if if they're going to be funded, so oh. that it's uh, documented. Yes, the amounts and such. Written approval. Written approval. Written, okay. Yes, we will also get your written approval, guys. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay, moving on. Um, Alejandro, you have a let's bring that up. Oh, look, it's already up. Look at look at this efficient man right here. Look no. at him. Okay. I wanna ask something though, maybe real quick. Okay, I'm gonna give the floor to Alejandro. He had mentioned he had some friendly amendments. Um, yeah, go ahead. Will had uh, his hand up. Sorry for throwing the wrench last second, but who is going to be responsible for writing that to the student org? He is. You are? Okay. That's it. Thank you. He has the money. Are we moving on? Moving on to professional headshots resolution. Jeez. <laughs> All right. So, um, I don't know how to start this. So, I. Uh, I wanted to create a resolution to provide professional headshots to all the MSU Denver students. Um, so the abstraction would be in an increasing, com increasingly competitive job market, a polished and professional online presence is crucial for students seeking employment opportunities. This resolution aims to enhance professional development opportunities, professional development opportunities for the student population by establishing a service that provides high quality headshots for presentational and networking purposes. The proposed service is to be facilitated by a professional photographer and will offer students the opportunity to obtain a professional headshot free of cost. Whereas TSAC is to provide the student body of MSU Denver with the opportunity to access a professional headshot session for the procurement of their professional online profiles and or anything they may require a professional headshot for. Therefore, AB further resolved $500 will be allocated from this for this initiative through the leadership development budget, photographer Allison McLaren is to be paid $250 per day for her skills and time. Therefore, it be, be it further resolved to promote the opportunity for all students, the professional photo, shop, photo shoots will take place on two different school days, Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, and Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, between the hours of 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. The location will be outside of the SGTSAC office and SGTSAC conference room, which is Tivoli 305. It's not on there, but um, we'll make the amendment after. Uh, 
Um, therefore, be it further resolved, any interested student is to be filling out and is to fill out the following spreadsheet um, with the time slot they desire to reserve. Each student will have a 10 minute slot with Allison McLaren to, cle to complete their headshots. The student is to not exceed their time slot to respect the upcoming student's time. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. TSEC will provide a sign up sheet requiring students' names and emails that so that Allison McLaren is able to contact the students and provide them with their professional headshots. Therefore, be it further resolved, the spreadsheet will be available through the SGTSEC Instagram bio that students can access and also through a QR code. They will also be able to access the spreadsheet through our Instagram bio. I already says that, but we can edit that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he wanted it. He yeah, wanted it yeah, yeah, erase it. Yeah, it, yeah. it basically repeated myself right there. Um, yeah, and then with the access to the spreadsheet, um, I also wanted to add some amendments. So I wanted to say uh, the last part. Go back to the yeah, right there. Um, I wanted to say that uh, public relations can create an email that they can send out to. Um, all the chairs of the department so the department chairs can uh, uh, spread the information out to the students. We also yeah. should add to the report be resolved that $500 will be allocated. I already did. Oh, that's in the, oh, it is already. My bad, my bad. Um, yeah, I believe that is it. Oh, and then. Also, um, we will be posting it on the Roadrunner link. I don't know. To the student body. Student body. Roadrunner link, but I think Alejandro is referring to the runner, the student newspaper is what I was trying to tell you yesterday. My bad. And then. Uh, Matt has questions. Well, hold on. Uh, it was Reapers and then Matt. Well, are we starting discussion? Are, are you happy? Actually, yeah, I'm. I'm good with this. Um, I'll open up the floor for anybody who wants to make any amendments. I'm, I, because of the resolution, I have to direct this question. I am concerned about. I love the reach that you're planning to get with this, and the idea is fantastic. I'm concerned about the um, attraction and interest that could result in two, you know, scores of people lining up forever. We need to verify their students, her time, the allocation of time that TSEC members are present during that time because it's in our office, right? But um, it's gonna be outside of the office. So I know the setup can just be like uh, right outside the door. So we don't necessarily need to be inside the office unless students need to, um, get something from the office. Right. Is there like a limited number we can, you know, and then it, okay. Yeah, can I answer yeah. real quick? So I think we want to do, it's a, sh stop it. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, we do that. And then if, if they would like to wait inside the TSAC office, I like guess also a good opportunity for people in the TSAC office is there for them to like study and hold the space. Um, so there is a limited time, like they have to go into the spreadsheet put their names in and then you have 10 minutes and it's however many a lot yeah like allotments there is from 11 to 3 and that that's that's all we're offering on those two days and then you know an, a nice way to handle if we do have an influx of interested students is to let give them a way to express you know they wish they could have made an appointment but it was full and maybe we can do this later on in the term something like that yeah it's a great idea. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, it was Matt and then. We can if you do you want to. Do you want to add that? Yeah, um, we can definitely add that if, you know, the spreadsheet uh, reaches its max capacity. Um, we can uh, plan another day to provide another opportunity for students. To take the professional this headshots. Is the end, Kenny. Is full, there will be a waiting list? 
um, another, or actually, yeah, we'll get their information. We'll get their information. Or I'm trying, yeah, I know, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Room up for a potential event. Yeah, so I think we should probably add that to like the flyer and just be like, if the sign up, if the sign sign up sheet is full, email us, and we'll put you on a waiting list, or some, or if you will be considered for the second time we do that. That would have to go to the flyer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I had Matt, and then I had you. Is are you good? Yes. Okay. Matt. Yeah, I had a question. I'm trying to think of which way to put it. Um, I do have a slight concern with it being an Excel document, but I'm not sure a better solution. Because are we trained on the Excel document having like their name, email, and phone number? Yes. Um, the immigration department did this before, and it was a success. So I yeah that that's why we decided to go with the generally available like spreadsheet. All right, if it's worked and has been cleared by and cleared of other issues, then I'm fine with it. Okay. Do you have anything to add? Let me know if you want. What's the deadline for this for people to sign up? Um, there's not really a deadline it's basically if it fills up that's when it officially closes but if it doesn't fill up by the date then it'll stay open for students to still rsvp sweet any other questions michael what are you doing um okay um okay so i motion that we move to a oh, closed discussion. Second. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, okay, so I mo I motion that we vote on this resolution. I second. Cool. Okay, we'll we'll do a general vote. Sweet. Okay, we are uh, we are voting to pass an allocation of five hundred dollars for uh, this resolution that will provide the students with uh, a session, an opportunity for a free of cost session for headshots. Um, sweet, everybody who agrees say aye. 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 Um, any, any opposition? Any abstentions? Gabe said aye. Yeah, he voted. Beautiful. Okay, it passes. Ooh. Um, would and anybody has anything else to say? One hippopotamus? Oh, never mind. No, not even the two hippopotamuses. <laughs> you calling me fat? If now that we are in the practice of when we pass resolutions, if I can please get a clean copy of this resolution. Um, between Denny and, and Kenny um, to Armando and I, so we can share it. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Perfect. Mike. I motion that we end this meeting. I second that. Wait, we're not. We'll have I object. You object? Yes. Because I have my hand up. Oh, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, he still has something to say. Thank you. I don't withdraw my motion, though. Okay, thank you. Just real quick, um, I do have some stuff going up next uh, Friday, but I'll post more information on that. I will be here for most of the meeting. That's all. I just wanted to make sure the council is aware of that. Thank you, Will. Okay. One hippopotamus, two hippopotamus. <laughs> hey, want a motion, Mike? Motion's been made and seconded. We should vote on it. Okay, well, let's vote. I the, we are voting on adjourning this meeting. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? 
Nice job, team. So proud of us. We're going to have a chat.